guys, so it's time for my end of the month book haul. Now I have acquired quite a few graphic novels and illustrated books recently so I have decided to do a separate haul for those which will happen sometime in the future but I don't want to overload you in one video so yes those will not be in this video if that's what you were hoping for um, but there's lots of other exciting books here to show you. Let's start with two books that were sent to me by Freight Books which I requested after I read Fishnet which Freight also published and Adored, I have reviewed Fishnet so I'll link that down below, um, but they are Scottish publishers and they have sent me Silma Hill, a novel by Ian Maloney. I'm not certain on the time period this is set in but it's definitely like, you know, some time ago and it's about a reverend's daughter who's treated very badly and um, is then accused of witchcraft because of some like pagan discoveries they make in the area and it just sounded really wonderful, mysterious and intriguing so I'm really excited to read this one. They then also sent me Jellyfish by Janice Galloway and this is just a collection of Janice Galloway's short stories and she is also a Scottish author who I own one other book by and um, although I haven't read any of her books yet I hear a lot of good things from, from everybody so I'm excited for this collection. It may look odd but it's actually a really nice book, um, I love this really vibrant shade of yellow. The next book I picked up for myself whilst I was in London and that is Sexing the Cherry by Jeanette Winterson. I recently read Stone Gods by Jeanette Winterson which was my first Jeanette Winterson book ever and I really enjoyed it um, and really wanted to check out more of her books so I picked up this one because I saw it in a bookshop and really liked the cover and have already read it and will be reviewing it but I absolutely adored this. It was so weird and wacky and I gave it four out of five stars because there was some kind of like moments that just surpassed weirdness. <laughs> Generally speaking I really really enjoyed this book it's not very plot driven, it's about a mother and a son during the 1700s. The mother actually finds her son uh, as an abandoned baby in the Thames and it's kind of about self, understanding yourself and your place in the world and who you are and yeah, it was really beautiful. I think it's a really, really excellent example of Jeanette Winterson's prose and I cannot wait to check out more of her books. The next book is a little second-hand children's book that I picked up because Jen said it was lovely. I think she enjoyed it when she was a child and it is about a dragon and it just sounded wonderful and I love dragons and I love children's books about dragons and this is Green Smoke by Rosemary Manning. I couldn't find an in-print copy of this anywhere. I don't I don't think it's still in print. This was published by Puffin, which is a shame, but um, I got a second-hand copy, so that was pretty good. And I believe it's just about a little girl that makes friends with a dragon, and I don't really know much else about it, but it's super short, and Jen loved it, so I'm probably going to love it too. <laughs> I have quite a few poetry collections this month and two of which I picked up for myself. One is Don Patterson's Orpheus, a version of Rilke. So these are poems by Don Patterson which are reworkings of a collection of sonnets and poems by Rilke. Um, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. But um, the original sonnets were published in the early 1900s and yep, yeah, this is Don Patterson's revision of them. I just really like Don Patterson as a poet. I haven't actually read the originals, so I don't know if I should maybe get myself a copy of the originals before I read this one, but I'm sure it doesn't matter which order I read them in. And um, I mean, the title Orpheus obviously appealed to me for obvious reasons. <laughs> so I think this one will be interesting. I then picked up Michael Rosen's Fighters for Life selected poems. I love Michael Rosen. Michael Rosen was my absolute favourite poet as a child. He writes just some absolutely wonderful children's nonsense poetry and I loved that kind of thing when I was a kid and I went to see Michael Rosen speak a couple of times at like the Edinburgh Book Festival and he was just like an author I really admired as a child. So I picked up this collection of his work and even better I believe they're quite like left wing and political so I'm even more excited to read them because of that because I am quite the lefty myself. So I, I do enjoy a bit of like politically motivated, moving poetry, so I hope these are good. I was then sent some poetry by Faber, which I requested, and I got more Don Patterson, which I'm really excited about, because like I said, I just really like Don Patterson's poetry. And this is just a collection of 40 sonnets, and it's a new edition, that's why it's a little hardback. It's again, just some more poetry I'm sure I'm gonna really enjoy. And Faber also sent me two other books of poetry, one which I requested, which is The Complete Nonsense of Edward Lear, which is children's nonsense poetry. Um, 
I adore Edward Lear. Again, like I said, I loved nonsense poetry when I was a kid. It just, it's just children's poetry, essentially. And you may be familiar with Edward Lear as he wrote um, The Owl and the Pussycat Went to Sea in a beautiful pea green boat with lots of money and plenty of honey all wrapped up in a five pound note. Um, one of my favourite poems when I was a child and still to this day, a wonderful poem. Um, and I just they recently come out with this new edition of his work and it's really cute and lovely and I thought it would make a really nice addition to my Christmas gift guide for children. So when I saw this I was like, oh I want to relive my childhood and um, read this one again. Now, the next one they asked to send to me as they have brought out a new edition of it and it is Ariel, Poems by Sylvia Plath. I did Sylvia Plath in school, like I'm sure a lot of people did. Um, she was one of the, the authors, the poets that we did um, for my like class, my English classes in school. I really enjoyed what I read of her in those classes. I've never read The Bell Jar and I don't actually own any of her poetry so I'm actually really pleased to now own a copy of her poetry so that I can relive them for myself and remember why I enjoyed them, especially like years on now as, an, as a bit more of a well-read adult. So yeah, I'm excited to read this one. Now the next three I got at the Vintage Showcase which I went to when I was in London, which was just a event to like talk about some of Vintage's up and coming releases um, to the press and other people and I was there with a few other booktubers and they gave us some free books at the end that they were excited about and hoped we'd be excited about. So. Yes, I will show those to you. They're all proof copies, so they're not the final covers. But the first one is Thomas Savage's The Power of the Dog. And it's about two brothers who live on a farm. And one of the brothers gets married. I think the brothers have a bit of a strange relationship. And the other brother is very jealous and aggressive. So he um, tries to destroy that relationship. And I don't know much else about it, except that I've already lent this to a friend in like the period between me getting it and filming this haul and they loved it. <laughs> so that's a good recommendation, but they thought it was a fabulous book, so that's good to hear. Now the next one is ridiculously huge. And this is The Crow Girl by Eric Axel Sund, and this is actually written by two authors, um, and that's just sort of like their pen name. They are musicians and they do photography together, so like long-term collaborative artists, and this is their first novel. As you can see, it's huge. I actually think this might be a bind-up of like a trilogy. It was originally in Swedish and I think was a bestseller in Sweden. So this is the first English translation and yeah, I think they've just bound up maybe what was published separately originally. It's meant to be a really dark, horrific crime story. Now, I'm really excited for this purely from hearing the authors speak at this event. They were fabulous. They were some of my new favourite people. You know, you just take to people and their answers are just fantastic and they were just really funny and you know, just really chill and I just like them. I like them a lot and um, I'm going to have to look up some of their other art that they've done, like their music and their photography, but I am really excited for their book despite it being huge because they were just so awesome that I really want to read this. I think my favourite thing was when we'll ask them how they'd written such good female characters because I think some of the main characters in this are females. Um, they just said, oh well halfway through we decided to change them to women and just change their names. Originally they were men and I like that. I'm like yeah, <laughs> they didn't think too much about it. It's a good way of doing it. Um, and the last one I got at the Vintage Showcase is The Girls by Emma Klein. Again, Emma Klein spoke at this event and she made me really excited for her book. This one sounds wonderful. I I think it's a girl's coming of age story in the 1960s in the US with a bit of a dark twist from the way she was talking about it. So I'm really intrigued to see what's inside this one. And I have it on good authority that this book is definitely not just for women. But those are all the books I have to show you just now until my graphic novel slash illustrated book haul. One book in particular I'm sure none of you will be surprised to know that I purchased but I've, but I've decided to put in that book haul. Despite not being a graphic novel, it's very heavily illustrated. I wonder if you can guess what it is. Um, so I seem to be losing my voice, so I better go. Um, until next time guys, happy reading and I'll see you all again soon. Bye!